This video will discuss the pathway from the retina back into the brain and into the primary visual areas of the brain. What we see in this particular drawing is a left eye and a right eye looking out this way. I've labeled this as left and right to represent the left visual field and the right visual field. As light enters the left eye, the eyes, the left visual world <clears throat> ends up on the right side of the retina as shown. And the right visual world ends up on the left side of the retina as shown. Of course, this bump in the middle represents the nose. Now, we need just a little bit of terminology to make it easier for us to talk about this. The in, inner portions of the retina close to the nose are known as the nasal retinas. And then we also have this other side, the outer side, which is closer to the temporal bone, and those are called the temporal retinas. So we provided labels here to show the different areas of the retina. As we look at this drawing, there are a couple of things that we can observe. First, as we already discussed, the left visual field goes to the right side of both retinas, and the right visual field goes to the left side of both retinas. Now, we'll notice that there's a pathway from the eyes, the optic nerve, and the right eye, the temporal portion of the retina, goes along the optic nerve till it reaches the optic chiasm, but it does not cross the optic chiasm. It stays on the same side. Same is true of the temporal portion of the left eye. It comes along into the optic nerve and goes to the optic chiasm, but does not cross the optic chiasm and stays on the same side that it was on before. If we took it, take a look at the nasal portion of the right eye, we can see that it goes along the optic nerve, but when it reaches the optic chiasm, it actually crosses over to the opposite side. And the same is true of the left nasal retina. It crosses at the optic chiasm to the opposite side of the brain. So based on these, we can make a few more observations. One would be that the temporal retina output does not cross at the optic chiasm. However, nasal retina output crosses at the optic chiasm. Putting these things together then, it's easy to see that the right visual field will end up in the left hemisphere and that the left visual field will end up being processed in the right hemisphere. Here we can see the names of the different structures that we've been talking about. We have the optic nerve that comes off of each eye. That's the same as cranial nerve number two. It reaches the place where there's crossover of information, potentially. This area is known as the optic chiasm. Once it leaves the optic chiasm, it's now referred to as optic tract. Even though these are the same axons all the way along, it's given different names by neuroanatomists, perhaps to help be more specific in knowing what area is being discussed. Now we're going to add more information so that we can see the entire pathway. These circles up here at the top represent the eyes. And as we've seen, we have the optic nerve. And then from the optic nerve, we reach the optic chiasm. Then it becomes the optic tract. And it goes to this structure. This is supposed to represent a part of the thalamus called the lateral geniculate nucleus abbreviated LGN. There are actually synapses here, so these axons that travel all the way from the eye end up synapsing with new neurons 
here in the lateral geniculate nucleus. From the lateral geniculate nucleus, we have a new pathway that takes the information back from the LGN to the back of the brain, to a part of the brain called the occipital lobe. One particular part of the occipital lobe is known as the striate cortex. And it's found at the very back of the brain in the occipital lobe. The striate cortex is also known as the primary visual cortex, primary visual area, which is often abbreviated as V1. And that's an overview of the pathway of visual information from the retina all the way back into the primary visual cortex.